if that were the case, half of the population, 50% of the population, would be in possession of 50% of the income. And we would see that this point would be on that line of total equality. And this would continue all the way through, so that 75% of the income was owned by 70% of the population. The end result would be a line of perfect equality, which looks like this. And again, sometimes it's called the egalitarian line. And in an economy that did have a perfectly even distribution of income, this would be the Lorenz curve for that economy. In reality, however, this does not exist. In all economies, income isn't distributed evenly, and as a result, we end up with a small percentage of the population having a larger percentage of the income. In a situation of total equality, the poorest 50% of the population would still have 50% of the income of the economy. In reality, however, it would be less than this. So, for example, if the poorest 50% of the population earned 25% of the income, the Lorenz curve would pass through this point here. And if the richest 10% earned 75% of the income, we would be at a point here. We could continue to graph these points along the entire curve, and then we would draw in a curve. So this is what the Lorenz curve for this economy would end up looking like. The closer the Lorenz curve is to the line of perfect equality, the more equally distributed the income is in that economy. So if we drew in another Lorenz curve for a different economy, we've got now a blue economy and an orange economy. In the orange economy, the distribution of income is much less even because the line, the Lorenz curve, is further away from the line of perfect equality. In the blue economy, we have a more equal distribution of income because we're closer to that situation of perfect equality. For a more specific measure of the level of equality or inequality, uh, we use a mathematical tool called the Gini coefficient. And the Gini coefficient involves looking at these two areas under the red line. Uh, this first area between the red and the orange line, and then this second area uh, between the orange line and, and the, the 90 degree black line. And the Gini coefficient is found by measuring the area A and dividing that by the total area of A plus B. If that orange line moved closer and closer to the line of perfect equality, to the point where the area A equaled zero, then the Gini coefficient would be zero divided by A plus B, and that would give us a Gini coefficient of zero. So an economy with a perfectly equal distribution of income would have a Gini coefficient of zero. If the orange line was to move outwards and move towards a situation of perfect inequality, which would look like this. Then A would be uh, the same as A plus B. The area B would become zero, and the Gini coefficient would become A on A, and the answer to that would be one. So an economy with a perfectly unequal distribution of income would have a Gini coefficient of one. Now, in reality, we don't have any countries whose Gini coefficient is zero or any whose Gini coefficient is one, and we tend to be somewhere uh, in between those. In a lot of developed com uh, countries, we're looking at between 0.3 and 0.4 is quite common. What's more important than looking at the number on its own is to look at the trend of that number. And also, we're finding in, in a lot of developing countries that the Gini coefficient is becoming greater. So what that means is that over time, inequality is becoming greater. And that's a sign of uh, the richer parts of society becoming richer and the poorer parts of society becoming poorer. That then becomes an issue for governments uh, who need to make decisions about how to redistribute income through their, uh, their social security payments and things like that in order to correct the issues arising from an unequal distribution of income.